So hi everyone and uh, welcome to this particular video uh, wherein we're going to be discussing the, at least the start of our discussion on panel data models. So the use of panel data is sort of uh, uh, very, very common in microeconometrics and in the realm of econometrics. And what we'd like to do is, well, it's important for us to know what models we can use uh, and the particular assumptions each of these models make when uh, our data is of a panel structure, which we know is quite interesting to uh, uh, to understand. So uh, I'm gonna motivate first our discussion on uh, panel data models by discussing the relationship or potential relationship between green spaces and income. So green space is generally the amount of uh, green space like uh, plant space or like forestry or parks and nature in say a city. So uh, you have cities say like New York, uh, San Francisco uh, and uh, London that have generally a lot of green space. That is, they have a lot of parks, have a lot of walkways and things like that. And then you have cities in like developing countries wherein uh, th those things do not exist as much. And we want to see, is there a relationship between green spaces and income? So in here, we're presumably dealing with a panel data set, right? So we have, say, con um, we're going to have cities, right? Cities, right? So you have, for example, um, New York, LA, San Francisco, uh, Chicago, um, London, and so on. And you would presumably have data on them for like, to, uh, 2005, 2006, until say 2023 and so on. So presumably you would have data on the green space on an, and on the average income of people living in a city from say yearly data. And you would also have it for multiple uh, uh, entities. So we have a, um, a cross-sectional component to it as well as a time component. So. Typically, we only focus on either one of the two, but when we have panel data, we bring the best of both of these worlds. We have both a cross-sectional dimension and a time dimension in there. Okay, so let's formalize it. So let's pose the research question. Do the presence of larger green spaces, uh, is that associated okay, with a higher income in cities around the world? Okay, So there are many cities around the world, which we know, and the average income that can definitely vary throughout time. Hence, conceivably, we can deal with a panel data set in this particular research. And as we mentioned, a panel data set has both a cross-sectional component uh, and a time component. And we can generally formulate this income as follows, uh, this uh, model as follows. You have, for example, your dependent variable, which is average income in a city, and your independent variable being green space, which is if I have green space, does do larger green spaces generally correlate to higher uh, average incomes, right? So that's what that beta one coefficient will do. So we have now two subscripts, a subscript that is I, right? Representing the cross-sectional component, which is say a city, and then you have a subscript T, which is the time component, which generally deals with uh, uh, time, right, in general. So this is more interesting. This is a little bit more interesting simply because we now have these two dimensions that are there. And a good question is can data sets like these potentially give us further insight? So, why? Uh, the, the eagle eye, the Hmong, you might have noticed, why do we have these additional terms? So notice, well, apart from us having these two subscripts, we now have sort of three looking error terms, right? Three error terms that are there. You have VT, which is a time-specific error term. You have alpha I, which is a space or a cross-sectional specific error term. And you have uh, an, an error term for the whole equation, which is a function of both I and T, right? So you have sort of three error terms. Why do we have these additional terms, right? So the reason is, uh, is quite simple. The additional terms are essentially just some form of an error term, right? Again, these are error terms. The reason for their inclusions is just mainly because we are dealing with panel data. And we need to try to account for the fact that we have these two 
uh, dimensional differences that we're going to deal with, right? So that's what we have. VT in particular is a time-dependent error or a time-dependent term. If the data set contains, for example, cities, as in our example, it means that this is some error that is more sort of dependent on the general trend rather than based so on a city-specific trend. What I mean by this is, well, cities around the world generally have this trend regardless of each individual uh, each individual city. So it's like all of them are roughly growing throughout time. Cities are getting larger throughout time. That's a time component thing, okay? Now, alpha i, on the other hand, is some space-dependent term, some cross-sectional dimension-dependent term. And this term seeks to explain the differences across cities, which may be used to explain average income, okay? And note that these things do not vary throughout time. So consider like different cities. So like the demographics, the geography, the climate, the education, the race composition in a city might vary. So for example, take a city like London, its climate would be very different uh, from a city like Nairobi, right? So you have those differences okay, across cities, right? Which are city specific. And those factors don't really change throughout time. Climate, at least in London, is generally fixed, right? Rains a lot, but Nairobi, because of its geographic location, right? Its climate is fairly fixed. So those things are sort of not really time related, they're space related. They're specific to a particular city. And of course, cities vary in all of these things too, right? Now let's try to suppress and sort of simplify our analysis just a little bit, okay? Uh, in most panel data studies, the time dependent element okay, is implicitly incorporated usually through the use of dummy variables. So instead of writing that error out, okay, we're gonna implicitly account for it sometimes through dummy variables or we largely ignore it, right? So that, that's how it is in practice. And this is because heterogeneity across time is not really evident in most of the literature, right? So that time heterogeneity doesn't really exist in a lot of the literature. So to be able to account for it using dummy variables, well, one way for you to do it is through this form, through dummy variables. Well, as an example, suppose I have five years in the study. So say I have 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, and 2004. I'm gonna have a dummy variable for say the year 2000, another dummy variable for this, another dummy variable for this, another dummy variable for this, and then this one by the dummy variable trap notion will be suppressed to the model intercept, right? So I'll have T minus one dummy variables wherein the last one or the first one would suppress to beta naught, right? So that's one way for me to account whether or not these time, there are time specific things I need to consider. There's time specific heterogeneity I need to consider. Right? But more often than not, a lot of people find that these deltas are not specific, uh, statistically significant from zero, right? So these dummy variables are generally not, um, not really uh, informative into the statistical relationship between green space and income, and at least in this model, okay? So it's easy for us to do it when we only have a few years, say in our example, that's basically four dummy variables but it's very difficult when we have a lot of time observations, right? So it's super difficult when we have a lot of time observations simply because we're gonna lose a sense of our degrees of freedom. Okay? So what I'm gonna do is let me now define a composite error term. So I'm gonna refer to this A to I term here as a composite, okay, a composite error term, right? And uh, in econometrics, when we mean composite, it's usually just a mixture of two things or two or more things. In this case, it will be a mixture of two things, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define this, head, uh, this idiosyncratic specific term, this cross-sectional error specific term, the space error term, uh, and the normal regression error term, that's a function of both I and T, I'm gonna merge them together in one term, which I'm gonna call eta it, 
right? And that's just basically going to be the sum of the two of them. And I'm going to refer to that eta it as a composite error term, okay? And uh, we simply mean that it's a combination of these two components, a true error, which is our model error, and some other error in this case. And in order to understand what this means, we must first understand, okay, why is a regular classical linear regression using OLS, why is that not adequate most times when we estimate panel data, right? So what are the shortfalls of, uh, of OLS, right? So why is OLS inadequate sometimes when we're dealing with panel data? Well, we know the assumption that in OLS that the covariance between the, uh, well, not necessarily the covariance, but the expected value of the error and the, uh, and the regressors must be equal to zero. So we know that that has to be true. And sort of this implies that, well, if we have now you uh, um, this error, right? This error term being that A to I term that we defined, it also has to be equal to zero, right? Because it's now a function of two errors. So in order for OLS okay, to yield a consistent and um, unbiased estimator, it must be that the relationship between that composite error term and the regressor should be zero, right? Because we know that the regressor should be uncorrelated to the errors. So that has to be true in order for OLS to yield a consistent and unbiased estimator. Okay, but when we think a lot deeper, especially when we're using panel data, we're in our composite error term is uh, both just an, a, for, um, a cross sectional specific error term and a whole error term, it is likely not the case. And why is it not the case? Well, consider our example, right? In our example, our eta it is this alpha i plus u it. And in our example, we only have one regressor, which is green space. Okay. We can see that assuming that is equal to zero, okay, uh, just the error, just the error itself, maybe this and this, okay, maybe holds like normal, right? In most cases, and there probably wouldn't be an issue. But the thing that is sort of problematic is we have this alpha i term. And the covariance of alpha i and that green space term, okay, between our regressor and alpha i is highly likely to be not equal to zero. Like it's it's more often than not not equal to zero. And that's a problem, right? Because we know that if that covariance is positive or uh, is that covariance is some positive value, then of course we're gonna be dealing with uh probably not a good estimator. Okay, so what, what do we think of this? Our answer is probably that it is not equal to zero. So more often than not, that covariance term is not equal to zero. In our example, this is because there are many things that are space dependent, right? As I said, alpha i are factors that are generally fixed throughout time, right? And this is because there are many things that are space dependent, things like geography, climate, and weather that will influence the amount of green space in a city. Well, if you think about it in a simple example, suppose a city like Dubai, which is built in a desert, and Manila, which has uh, which is near the equator, right? So one is definitely more conducive for green spaces and has a larger proportion of forests, right? That being Manila. Uh, and the Dubai being harder to maintain green spaces simply because of the climate it has, right? So Dubai and Manila are both heavily developed cities, but conceivably, it's much easier to have a green space in Manila because of the climate, location, geography, and the general weather in Manila than a very dry city like Dubai, right? Of course, newer technology improvements might mitigate this, but on the average, right, um, this has to be true. Right, so there exists these unobserved heterogeneities, right? We know that it's likely that our alpha i's, things that are remaining fixed through time, like climate, geography, things like that, right, are highly correlated with the regressors that we could have, like green space. Okay, and what we do is we refer to that alpha i term as unobserved heterogeneity. 
And this is something that panel data can uniquely shed a lot of light on that a simple cross-section or a simple time series regression will not be able to do. So we don't observe data points for the most part of these unobserved factors. We simply don't, okay? The thing is, the alpha I factors like climate, in uh, like climate, geography, those things, these factors just so happen to be generally constant throughout time. Okay, it, it, it's just been proven, it's just generally constant throughout time. And it's heterogeneous in a sense that it varies across space. In our example, it varies through cities, right? These factors are very different in a city like Manila versus a city like London or Dubai or say Amsterdam, or say a city in Canada like Toronto. So all of these sort of vary throughout time, right? So we, we have those things varying throughout time. And in the presence of unobserved heterogeneity, OLS will both be biased and inconsistent, right? Hence, we must try to find a way to eliminate this. And this is exactly what the more formal panel data models will seek to do, right? So the goal of panel data models will be to try to eliminate this unobserved heterogeneity component, right? Now, how what's the uh, what's the very first approach to do that? We refer to that as the first differences model. Okay, and we're gonna be discussing the first differences model in the next video. So thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.